From Art Park in Charlottesville, Virginia, this is The Daily Creature. I'm Joe Vina. Today's animal, the elephant. So let's jump right into the facts and figgy. Is he bothering you? Out you go, out you go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. There he goes. There he goes. Sorry about that. Hey, don't do that. No. Oh. <laughs> we'll talk later. Where were we? Ah, the elephant. The elephant. The animal that inspires our creativity today. Let us jump to facts and figures about this lovely creature. I have with me my Simon and Schuster's Guide to Mammals. A helpful volume indeed. Facts and figures. Facts and figures. Let's start with Elphus maximus, aka the Indian elephant. They are gray in color with a few long stiff hairs present on the body. Uh, in particular, on the tip of the tail. It has a flat forehead and a long trunk. Compared with the African elephant, the Indian elephant has much smaller ears. Fascinating. Here's a fun fact. When the herd, <clears throat> that's the name of the group of elephants, when the herd travels, it usually does so in a single file line. Isn't that fantastic? Thank you, Elphus Maximus. Now, Loxodonta africana, AKA the African elephant. Note right away those larger ears as mentioned. This is the largest living terrestrial mammal. That means the biggest beast on land. Fantastic, you go African elephant. African elephants are found in sub-Saharan Africa. The groups are constantly moving when the animals are feeding. And the best part, the African elephant is a social creature living in a family with a matriarchal structure. This means the head of the group is an elderly female and she makes decisions about when and where to move and she keeps the peace in the herd. Fantastic. I love it. Fun facts and totally swellifant. Drawn to elephants. I love to draw. It relaxes me and I love to draw elephants because if you can't tell already, I love elephants. Today I'm going to draw with a pencil. We're going to keep it pretty simple, although there are many, many different uh, tools to draw with. I do love certain pens and markers, and I hope to talk with you guys about those in the future. But for now, let's stick to pencil. And I'm going to use a reference. A reference is simply a picture, an object, a resource of some kind that helps me understand what a thing looks like when I'm drawing it. And this picture of this African elephant is my reference. And I'm going to sketch, that is to say, I'm going to draw very lightly. And in the case of the reference, I'm trying to draw what I see to a certain degree. I'm using that reference as a way to understand what this animal really looks like in nature. And when I sketch, I sketch with very light lines. figure out where the eye is on the elephant, where the trunk and the tusk fall, back of the head, the ears. Sometimes I get frustrated with my drawings because I do enjoy drawing so much as I said. It means a lot to me so I can be critical of the way I draw. 
But I do try to finish the drawing, no matter how disappointed I might grow with the way that it looks. Now, I'm not disappointed in all of my drawings, just some of them, sometimes. Sometimes I'll draw a thing and not like it, and then look back at it and think to myself, oh, I like that drawing. Does that ever happen to you? Now, the great thing about a reference is that you don't always necessarily need one. Let's finish this guy off real quick. You can't see his trunk. It goes off at the bottom of the screen, but let's, let's bring it up here. It's just sticking out, right? Cool. Now, I like to draw an elephant without a reference as well. I like to sometimes do a quick sketch of something just from my imagination. And if I'm not happy with a line in my drawing, I can use this guy, right? The eraser. That's the beauty of working in pencil. There we go. And I think my elephant is saying something. So we'll make his mouth open. And what should he say? We'll draw him a speech bubble. He's saying he loves making art with you people, you creatures. He's having a good time. Let's see. Maybe he's wearing a striped tie. See? Fun stuff. Drawing and sketching. Daily Clay. Okay, as mentioned, we have our piece of gray clay, soft and ready to rock. And we've got those pincher fingers that we talked about. You'll use your pincher fingers to simply pinch and twist a piece of clay a bit smaller. And you have your big piece and your small piece. This is not the only way to make an elephant, friends. This is one way to do it. But in this way, we start with the big and the small piece. And we're going to take that big piece, in fact, and start specifically with that. And I take those pincher fingers again, and I begin to pinch one way. And then I turn gently and pinch the other way, gently pinching a neck for my elephant. Once I have her neck, I'll adjust the head just slightly and begin to pinch the elephant's nose. What is that nose called? If you said trunk, you're practically a zoologist. So here we go. She'll have a tail behind her. Just like the trunk, but much smaller. Pinching and smoothing with the tips of my fingers. And I'm going to set her aside Fantastic. Now we're going to take that small piece, friends. Take your small piece. Set her aside. Flat hand, fingers together. I simply roll. And stick with the plan. I'm going to take those pincher fingers and remove just a bit of clay. We're going to set it on the side. Spoiler alert, we're saving that for her ears. The rest of this piece becomes her legs. How many legs on an elephant? Well, if I split that piece in two, pieces the same size, split it in half, and then I split the halves in half, I get quarters. That is four pieces, which as luck would have it, is the right amount of leg pieces. I take each of those and gently roll them and stand it up on a foot. I roll out and I stand it up. The elephant foot is rather like a cylinder in shape, flat on the bottom. 
which makes it helpful for the structure of our elephant when it comes to standing. This is where we're headed. We're going to put her together, but we're not there quite yet. Remember this little piece. The elephant has pretty big ears, typically. I'm going to go for more of an African elephant style ears. I take that small piece and I break it into two pieces and I roll out those pieces and gently with my pincher fingers, I pinch them flat. Little oval shapes, little flat oval shapes. About the same size. Grab my elephant, bring her up close so you can see her. Please don't judge my hands, by the way. Hand sanitizer does terrible things to the skin of one's hands. I'll get around to a manicure soon. And I can figure out how to give myself a manicure. Here we go. I'm smoothing the smaller piece into the bigger piece. Gently press and smooth. So you get the ears of your elephant. Here we are, coming along nicely. Okay, and we're going to take a closer look at our elephant now to work out her face. Think about the shape of the animal's face, not just eyes, nose, and mouth, but where do these features actually go. I pressed in, you'll notice, just a little bit to make a spot for her eye. Now, I mentioned how much I love a sharp pencil as a sculpting tool, one of my favorites. I'm gonna take the sharp pencil and I'm going to gently create a hole just on one side of the trunk. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the trunk, but we'll hold on that for a moment. Now, I mentioned how much I like beads for eyes. I'm going to pop out a couple of these beads and that one's a bit big so I'm going to pop out. Oh no! Too many beads friends. These are seed beads. I get them at Michael's. I just love Michael's. I take a pointy pencil like this and I can actually pick up the bead on the pencil. Isn't that delightful? And I'm going to just pop it into the eye like that. I love the way the bead picks up light. Now, can you make an eye out of clay? Of course you can. There are no rules here, friends. We're not dealing in rights or wrongs, but I do love the shiny plastic eye. Fantastic. Okay, now we are taking a look at the tusks. And uh, as I did, on the one side of my elephant. I will now do on the other side with my sharp pencil, creating a hole parallel to the trunk. I don't wanna go in this way. I'll weaken the trunk. I'm going with the trunk. These holes that I've made, and now I have on both sides, as you can see, they are there to house the tusks, which I'm going to create with this bit of white clay here. So I take those pincher fingers and break off just a little bit. And I'm going to roll it out just with one finger. And I've got a kind of a little tusk shape. And just holding it up here, I feel like it's a bit big. I'm going to break it in half. I do want one end to be pointy so it can slide right into the hole. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so. Too bad about the tusks of an elephant. With a little extra gray clay, I break the teeniest, tiniest little bit, really tiny, and I roll it between my fingers into a kind of a little worm shape, and I set it just ever so gently on top of her eye to create that eyelid. Okay, now we have eyes, tusks. The final step 
for our elephant is to place the legs. And here's how we'll do it. I grab my elephant, I grab a leg, I gently press it against the side of the body, and I smooth it in. You're taking the smaller piece and you're gently pressing it against the side of the body. Many artists want to put the legs on the bottom of the body. And of course, that's okay, but side of the body, we create that, that shoulder, that hip, and then you're just smoothing the smaller piece into the bigger piece. Press that leg against the side of the body, smooth it in. Now you've already taken the time to stand your elephant's legs up. So that flatness should make for a sturdy pachyderm. Pachyderm is another word for elephant, of course. Upside down elephant, right side up elephant. There he is. And there you have a clay elephant. Again, this is one way to create an elephant out of clay. There are many, many ways to do it. But that's a fun trick that you can try again. And again. And again. Oh, he's coming to get you. He's coming to get you. Well, friends, that is all for us for today. From Ix Art Park, I am Joe Vina. This has been The Daily Creature. Please join us tomorrow. We're going to be featuring the house cat. And technical difficulties did conspire against us today to get this first post out to you on time. It didn't happen at 2 p.m. For that, we apologize, and we will be far more timely in the future. Thank you so much. Stay creative.